Reagan and I and the rest of our little group here are going to make sweet potato gnocchi. And this is something that Italians would not recognize. No, no, no. This is an invention. In Italy, this would be known as patata americana, an American potato, sweet potatoes, because they really don't have sweet potatoes in Italy to make gnocchi with. But I want to make this for you today because I like taking things and just going to a little different dimension. So you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. So we're going to start basically the way you would make potato gnocchi. And here's the trick. You do not want to boil the potatoes. Now, why not? Because you're putting too much water in them. Exactly. And too much water would mean what? Soggy. Would mean we'd have to add what? More flour. More flour. And more flour means heavy, dense, tough lead pipe right there. So we want to minimize the amount of flour that we're using. So here's our sweet potato. Okay. So we've already cooked them. And what I like to do is microwave them. That way, we're not adding any water. So you microwave them, and you want a really dry potato. If you were doing this with regular potatoes, you would want a baking potato. This is a basic sweet potato. We've cooked it. It's soft. And now we want to rice it. You don't want to put this in a food processor because you will make the potato too gummy, and then you, you just have to start over. So, Reagan, I'm just going to cut this sweet potato up into small pieces. You see it's very soft, and you're going to rice it right in there. And if you were doing a potato gnocchi, you would use this exact method of ricing your potatoes. If you didn't have a ricer, well, then you could do this with a hand masher, okay? And for this recipe, and I was telling my friends earlier that gnocchi is really something that you have to master. It's, it's all in the feel. It's all in your hands. And so it's hard to really give you a recipe. But if you absolutely had to write something down, I would say start with two large sweet potatoes. So that's two large sweet potatoes. We've riced them. Get them cool first. Once you microwave them, make sure that they cool down some. You could even get that cold and do it the next day if you wanted to. All right, so that's good. Here's a towel for your hands. You. We've got that. So let's get rid of this and talk about the flour. So for this recipe, I am using durum. Durum flour is a finer grind of semolina. In fact, in Italy, this flour is called rimascinata, which means to be remilled. So semolina is a very tiny, grainy type of flour, hard wheat flour, perfect for making pasta, high gluten, that's what you want. And here it is, finely ground. So we have about two cups of flour here. It's a finer grind. Why don't you feel that? You've never worked with that before? No, I haven't. Okay, so well, you can look for that because it's great for making pasta and bread as well. And to this, we want to add some salt, so a teaspoon of salt, and to give this a little added flavor, and in the northern Italian tradition, we're adding some nutmeg, mm. fresh grated nutmeg. So there's our nutmeg. All right, so you're going to mix that up by hand. Everything's a mano. Now, you could do this in a food processor, but then that would be cheating. This is the better way to do it. <laughs> you always want to make pasta on a board, something that has some grab to it. That's why I like wood to work on. All right, so now you can dump that right there, right in the center. And now we just make a little hole there, which the Italians call a fontana. This is how you would make pasta, mm -hmm. right, with eggs. So now we're going to take this, and we're going to put it right here. Okay. And now all we have to do is mix this in to a dough. Do you have S tips? Sounds <laughs> easy, right? So, yeah. The tip is get right into it. Now, you may use all this flour. You may not use all this flour. It just depends. You need to do this by hand so that you know when you have an appropriate dough, something that's going to hold together. It's a soft dough, but it's not overloaded with flour. So once you have, I like to call this just the shaggy mass, mm -hmm. I take it out and then I move all this out. Now you can re-sift this and use it on your counter to sprinkle the board with. All right, so let's put that there. Here's a little flour. And now you knead that. And what we want to do is knead that into a nice soft ball of dough that's going to hold together as a gnocco. So my trick is this. How do I know when I have enough flour in there? Well, I really don't. But there is a little test. 
And the test is, you have a pot of boiling water ready, small pot of water, and you lop off a little bit of this dough and form it into one or two gnocchi. Drop it into the boiling water. If it holds together without disintegrating, you are good to go, and those gnocchi are going to be light as a feather. If they fall apart in the water, well, then you know that you need to add more flour. And you just want to add that a little bit of a, at a time, testing it to make sure you have the right consistency. All right, how does that feel? It feels a little sticky, but I don't know what it's supposed to feel like. Well, so. let me see. <laughs> well, you know what? It's actually not bad. It's oh, a really nice dough. And when you make a dough like this, you want to control the amount of flour that you put on there. So if it's sticky, just take a little bit each time, okay. and then you can work it. And then once you have it into a nice ball of dough, you have to let this rest for about 30 minutes. You want to relax that gluten in there. So we put it under a bowl. And there's one that we've done earlier. So we're going to scoop that up. You see how soft that is? Put this back over here. And you see we, how much flour we really have left over? We got a wow. lot of flour left over. So now we're going to put a little bit more flour on our board. Take this dough, which is very soft, and a bench knife is a wonderful thing to use when you're dealing with pasta dough, bread dough, whatever it is, helps you lift and turn the dough. All right, it's very soft. I'm gonna give you a chance now to go ahead and do that yourself. A couple needs. And then what we have to do is form the gnocchi. Now, there are several ways to do that. The standard way, the real kind of easy way out, I say, is to just roll pieces of this dough under the palm of your hand into a long rope. And then you just cut them into whatever lengths you want. Half inch, inch if you want them bigger. Sometimes they make them very small. And you can just boil them. Top them with any type of sauce that you like. The more traditional way to do this is with the t off the tines of a fork or a butter paddle. So we're gonna do those two methods. Okay, now, but first thing we have to do is check and see if we have enough flour in this. So we're gonna take just a little bit. That's all we have to do. And we roll it under our hands like that. Let's just cut that up like that. Okay, now we could just boil that like that, or we could take a butter paddle and just roll it off the butter <laughs> paddle, just like that, see? And that gives you your, your gnocchi with the little cave underneath. And I'm gonna let you try that. Here's your paddle. You always okay. wanna make sure there's a little flour on there, and you hold this, not down here, but at an angle. Okay. It's easier for you that way. And there's light pressure on the thumb, just very light pressure. And pretty soon you'll be churning out thousands of these. You know, you'll have the Italian music on and a nice glass of wine, and you're done. They look think, great. They don't look like yours. But you know what, though? <laughs> that comes with a little bit of experience. So that looks great. So now let's try it with the fork method. So if you have a butter paddle, you can do that. So you want to do that again. Go ahead, cut those up. Okay. And now here's your fork. And again, you hold it at an angle. Okay. It, th this way? Yeah. Let's try this one first mm -hmm. for good luck. Not, not so high. Down. Okay. okay. There you go. And if it's sticky, you just add a little flour. Okay. All right. Now what we need to do is see if those are going to hold together in the water. So then you say three Hail Marys and hope that those things hold together. <laughs> because if they fall apart in the water, then you know that you have to add more flour. But if they don't, and I can see they're holding together beautifully, that we do not have to add more flour. Look at how clear that water is. How long does it take to cook a gnocco? Until it rises to the surface. And then you want to take them out. And there are all kinds of sauces we can use. We'll talk about sauce in a few minutes. But basically now, we know that they hold together. There they are. Pretty color, huh? Yeah. So we know that we're good to go. So we're going we're gonna to make this dough. You're all going to get a chance to make gnocchi. So let's go with 
dividing this up. So why don't you cut off a piece of that? Again, remember, you're sifting the flour that you have left over that have all these little nubs in it, and you're using that on your board. OK. Just like that? That's good. So with a light touch, you go under your hands, under the palms of your hands. Now, you can make these as fat or as thin as you would like to make them, if that's up to you. So you don't want to press it down. You just want to kind of extend it a little bit. So once you have it where you want it, then you just want to cut your little pieces. You can make them as thick as you would like. And as I said, right now, you could just cook them like that. Once you have them like that, just give them a little flour. Then get whatever instrument you want to use, your butter paddle or your fork. Pick up the gnocco and start making them. And as you make them, you see the ridges that are there are there for a reason to trap sauce. So you make a whole pile of them. You do a whole four cups, I mean four, um, four servings worth of gnocco, which will come out of a recipe like this, four to six servings. And you, as you make them, you put them on a parchment-lined baking sheet, like that. Get them all lined up. Do not put them on top of one another. Then when they're all ready to go, you can cook them. And while they're, while they're in the water, you're going to make the sauce. But first, let's give everybody a chance here to try their hand at making sweet potato gnocchis. <music> There are the gnocchi all cooked, and now all we have to do, Reagan, is toss them gently in that butter. We're using unsalted butter because all butter in Italy is unsalted. So, but the, you and you could have them like that, but we want to gild the lily a little bit here. Absolutely. So we have some crushed walnuts. You could use walnuts or hazelnuts. Why don't you put those in? About a half a cup. So they go in. This is a great gnocchi for a, a fall dinner or any time really. You could also do this with squash, but it tends to be a little bit more watery, so you'd have to add more flour. And here we have, and you can put that in, crushed amaretti cookies. These are amaretti cookies. You can buy them in any Italian uh, deli. They have, uh, they're made from almonds. They're called amaretti because amaretti means little bitter things. And it adds a, an interesting, just sweet flavor that complements the sweet potato. They go right onto our platter. They smell wonderful. Don't they? This is a first course in Italy. And why don't you put some of that wonderful Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese shaved over the top. So that is how you make the sweet potato gnocchi with that wonderful butter sauce. 